Welcome to Spilling the Tequila, the podcast that brings you the tequila spilling energy without the hangover. My name is Grace. And my name is Sonny Joe, yo, and welcome to Spilling the Tequila 2024. We hope you had a great Christmas and a great New Year's. And how exciting is it that we're starting a new year now? What was your new your New Year? What was your New Year's resolution? No one asked me this year. I was probably I was sick in bed with COVID. That's why I haven't seen anyone. But yeah. yeah. What's yours? Um, I have a lot, but they're all in different subcategories. But overarching theme is taking care of my home and my health. They're the two main focuses of the year. And then I have little subcategories of that. But Love the two that. Ones. Yeah. What are yours? Mine is to really go for it. And that could be <laughs> You always go for it, bro. I know, I know. But, like, to really go for it. Like, I may be in third gear and think that I'm in fifth. I need to, like, up my gears a little bit more. That's that's what I'm doing this year. Go for it. And that's, like, career-wise, side projects that you want to do, hustles, things you dream about. Like, it's fine to have that every year, but that's one of them. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, the second one as well is definitely um, health as well. So I want to get a Love Island body. I've never had that before. No, and deep down, everyone wants to have the body like that. So I've just joined the gym as well, as Grace knows, and I've been at the gym every day. I'm actually going to the gym after we record this session. And um, I'm so sore at the moment, and I'm going for it. And I'm excited for the reveal. I'm going to have a reveal party when I get my six, my, my six pack, my pack. <laughs> and all that and then I'm going to do a reveal where the red curtains yeah. open and I'll be Speedos and I walk yeah. down in front of all my friends and family and they see my new body <laughs> <laughs> I'm being oh my serious God, I love it I would it's actually like a nose that. job or something huh? It's like when someone gets a nose job or something. (laughs) And I'm not going to go to, I'm not going to go Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'm not going to be the guy that can't turn his neck. You know what I mean? I don't want those shoulders. I kind of want like a swimmer's body. Yeah, lean. You know, like lean, you Um, know. Yeah, like I want to be flexible. Like you can't see those jacked up dudes doing yoga. They can't even turn their neck, you know, and can't touch their toes. Like it's gross. No, you're not going to be like bodybuilder. No, no. I could see you as one, though. You know why they do that? The women and they're in gold? <laughs> Just for a phase. I think you'd not be really good. Look. That's not my look. <laughs> I don't have it be my look. Sorry. But yes, I'm with her. you. You're the same. Grace and I are going to get really hot bodies, and she's going to come <laughs> to the reveal party, too. She's my support act. She'll be on before me. And everyone's like, whoa, when she walks out. What song will you play for your reveal pa- reveal body party? What's the song you come out to? That's a good question. Or listeners out there, what would your reveal song party That's be showing up in your question. Body? Can yeah. we come back to that yeah, at the I think end so. of the episode? I need we to will. just ferment on that for a bit. We will. We will. Marathon. Okay. Let's start okay. the show. Welcome back to 2024, guys. Welcome back to 2024. Um, what I want to talk about is I feel like there's so many haters in the world, right? Yeah. And you, mm-hmm. it's everyone just like, oh, I hate that. I hate that. I hate that. I hate that. It's so annoying. So I'm going to talk about something that I formerly hated that I now love mm-hmm. and that I was wrong in hating it. And that is my love of Gwyneth Paltrow. I couldn't stand her before. and Can I was, ask why? It was to do with me. I thought she was out of touch. I thought she didn't get the real world. I thought, you know, she sells this beautiful candle. This smells like my vagina candle. She sells, like, marble eggs to put up your vagina for its health. She steams it. Like, she does all this crazy health stuff. And... I'm going to read some Gwyneth Paltrow quotes to you that are quite interesting because they're so good. Before you do, what does her vagina smell like? Have you smelt that candle? No, I haven't. It's sold out in like 30 seconds. But like, is she go like, is she, is Gwyneth Paltrow putting out a candle that actually smells like her vagina? Like it's, you know, she won't answer that question. Yeah, because we know what vag smells like. So she's lying. If that's smelling like roses, because he ain't smelled like roses. (laughs) 
some smell all right. No, I know. I'm just saying. I can't wait to if smell her. Tended to. I can't wait. Like it would be. It would be Sold great. Out. If, you can't get it, your hands on. I know, it. but I'm saying it would be great if Gwyneth Paltrow released a candle that actually did smell like her vagina. Like, I think and and I everyone think, was I expecting it. Everyone was expecting that, and they're like, "Oh my god, it really does smell like fish." You know what I mean? Like, oh my god, <laughs> fish! That's not healthy. Hang on, I'm going to quickly Google it while we discuss yes. this. But anyway, I thought she was so out of touch, and I just thought she's so fake and so famous, and you know, I just didn't like it. And then I realized that I was wrong. That she is out of touch, but I love that about her. I think mm. she's so funny. She's she is she is who she is. She's That's cool. unapologetically her. I'm Even attracted to everyone, people like that. See who you are. Yeah. Hates her for it, but she's I didn't real. realize she's sorry. Just to interrupt, for someone yeah. I don't know that much about Gwyneth Paltrow. I know who she is, but it's interesting to see your view and you're saying what these other people view. I didn't know, I myself haven't read or seen that side of her where people dislike her. Gwyneth Paltrow for me has always been this like pure, great actress, married Chris Martin, and I know she's got goop and she's just really into health. That's how I know her, her and she's led into it, but I don't know there's like other side that people found her like annoying. Okay, and stuff. well, I'm going to read some quotes to you Yeah. that are really funny. I'm just going to finish off this vagina candle little segment this is what i want to know what this is what she said about it (laughs) this candle is really like that provocation to say it's amazing to be a woman in every way it's amazing to have that kind of power and you deserve that agency um so douglas little who is the owner of hectic perfume we're very close friends and we've worked together a lot. He does all our fragrances for us. And one day we were smelling different fragrances and I was joking around and I smelled something and I said, as a joke, wouldn't that be cool if somebody had the guts to do that, to name the candle, this is what my vagina smells like. What a punk rock feminist statement to have that on your table. So... I don't think it smells like her vagina. Oh, right. I'm saying yeah. that would be funny if it did, though. If and it, it was shocked designed people. to. Just actually smell like Gwyneth Paltrow's vagina. That would be yeah. hilarious because everyone would expect it not to. Like, oh, my God, it really does. I'm like, well, we warned you. It says it smells like my vagina. Like- yes, exactly. <laughs> now, I'm going to read to you Gwyneth Paltrow's most controversial quotes over the years. Uh-huh. And this is why I didn't like her, but now this is why I love her if that makes sense. Okay. Not allowed to say that line, but yes. Oh, damn it. Okay, number one. Beauty fades. I just turned 29, so I probably don't have that many good years left in me. (laughs) Hey, but who hasn't said that in their 20s, not knowing that when you get to your 30s, it's not even that old. Everyone's done that, so I get it. It's just going to haunt her later because she's famous, but hilarious. Go. I would rather die than let my kid eat cup of soup. Oh, what's what's <laughs> cup of soup like? Maggi noodles? Yes. Oh, really? Oh, like, you know okay. the soups in the mug? Oh, well, she's out of touch. Whatever. People forget if they've been rich for a long time. Okay. Look at me sticking up for her. They're funny, though. Yeah, they're so funny. Okay. I don't really have drunk friends. My friends are kind of adult. They have a drink, but they hold their liquor. I think it's incredibly embarrassing when people are drunk. It just looks so ridiculous. I find it very degrading. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Degrading. But I also think that her friends are Hollywood. They would be really drunk. They're just like you and I. They're really good at holding their alcohol. Yeah. Wow. She's very passionate, isn't she? (laughs) Hang on. They get better. Let's get her on the show. Even actresses that you really admire, like Reese Witherspoon, you think Mm. another romantic comedy? You see her in something like Walk the Line and think, God, you're so great. And then you think, why is she doing these stupid romantic comedies? But, of course, it's for money and status. (laughs) (laughs) Like, I think she does it because she probably enjoys doing comedies because comedies are funny and stuff. And Reese Witherspoon's like a billionaire now. She has her own film company and stuff. And she's done a lot more acting roles than Gwyneth has. You know, is that what you're laughing at? That it's I'm so funny to say that in an interview. Yeah. 
Is that like, okay. is that kind of like, that's negative, right? Yeah, a but, little bit. but what I like about her is she loves Reese with the spoon. Yeah. So for her saying that, it's not negative at all. It's right. just like, it just is what it is. You know what yeah. I mean? She's not saying it maliciously. Okay. It's just the way it is. Okay. I am who I am. I can't pretend to be someone who makes $25,000 a year. Oh. Is she really rich, by the way? Yes. Like, is Goop really rich? Yes. Oh, so she's very successful for it. Good on her. Yeah. And she can't line and 25, don't, yeah. Okay. I'd rather smoke crack than eat cheese from a tin. I didn't even know you could get cheese in a tin, so I'm with you on that. I don't really eat I'm not a cheese person. I know, I know. I'm sorry, guys, that are listeners. Like, whoa. <laughs> but with Gwyneth, like anything in a tin, the fact that in America you get chicken in a tin grosses me out. So cheese is just as worse. I'd eat crack too. At least you get high from that. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> okay. Not that you should do crack, guys. No, don't do crack. Don't yeah. do that. Okay. Yeah. These are the final couple of ones. This one's really, really good. Oh, and this one really speaks to me. When you go to Paris and your concierge sends you to some restaurant because they get a kickback, it's like, no, where should I really be? Where is the great bar with organic wine? Where do I get a bikini wax in Paris? <laughs> Wait, where? who is she saying this to? Is she tweeting Just, this? No, in interviews. Oh, really? Like, so how she, does this come up? So she must be really quirky. I think she, yeah. is she a stoner? Maybe. Oh, I think she smokes weed. She sounds like she smokes weed. I mean, she lives in LA. Mm, yeah. True. She's on those gummies. She, yeah, probably. Um, okay, I want to just say, I'll just do a couple more because they're so good. So good. Okay. Um, do you want me to be honest? The Met Gala sucked. It seems like it's the best thing in the world. You always think, oh, my God, it's going to be so glamorous and amazing and you're going to see all these people. And then you get there and it's so hot and it's so crowded and everyone is pushing you. So it true. Look, it looks like that way. And to be honest, all the clothes that you have to wear, mostly the women, how the fuck do you go to the toilet? It actually sounds horrible. And no yeah. one can even stand and have a conversation at the bar because the dresses go for eight metres long and there's things – arrows coming out of their shoulders. Like, it just looks uncomfortable. I agree. So, yeah. I like when it, you say it. She just says it as it is. Yeah, exactly. And so, I'm going to leave it on this last one because this this sums up, and then I'm just going to quickly just say why I love her. Dot point. Four. Why are you saying this to me and the listeners like you're taking for so long? Who's capping you? I don't know. I don't like to drag on with things. You're not dragging on. Okay. My books are number one New York Times bestsellers. My website is growing every day and is very successful. If people who know me and love me have a criticism, then I want to hear it. But if not, it's just a projection, like I'm a screen and it's not about me. So I don't absorb it. So boom to the haters. Goodbye. I didn't realize she had haters. That's a thing. She has a, so many haters. Yeah, really. I've never heard. I've never. It's so interesting that I've never seen that in like the pop culture news or anything. That's all. I was surprised. I think I it's because Go like she is like when she says, you know, I, I don't want my kids eating cup of soup. Like, like she's not normal. Of course, she's not normal. She's an A lister. Like, when is an A lister normal? And she's but in the arts. Also, like anyone in the arts are just a little bit weird. Look what you're yeah. doing for a living. Totally. Like, <laughs> and then also because on Goop, it's like a health website, but it's also like a little bit eh, not traditional in that she gets her vagina steamed and is that kind of dangerous? Yes. And like when Travis and Courtney had to do yeah. that thing where they had to eat his cum to for her to fall pregnant and stuff. Remember that? Yes. That's okay, the kind I of stuff you. she does. And so I think people hate her for that. But I love her for that. I would do that if I was that rich. I know. It's so true. Wear crystals yeah. around your neck because it gives you energy. Yeah, you know? exactly. <laughs> I'm so into it. Like... Let Gwyneth Paltrow live, people. Mm. Let her live, okay? Yeah. I've always anyway. liked her. Who's she with now, by the way? Um, I don't know. She's married, though. But they lived in separate houses for, like, 10 years because she just didn't want to move in with a man because she just liked her own space. 
which yeah, really cool. sparked to me as well. Yeah. 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 I mean, it makes sense. If you're rich enough to do it, why wouldn't you? So, yeah. Have your own house. Yeah. Just go over to each other's <laughs> houses. Yeah. Like, so true. <laughs> it's it's like, a no brainer. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, I just wanted to put that out there in the world that I love Gwyneth Paltrow and I'm not afraid to say it. Should we reach out to her people and get her on the show, listeners? I think so. Yeah? Should we get her? I reckon she'd come on. Do you? Good old, good old Gwyneth. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes they're like, you know what? I want to get on the Australian show. Yeah. Australian tequila. No, true, true. Yeah. Anyway. And she can tell all. us all about the weird things that she's done. Like if you put this in your bum and you do this to your boob and you're you taking oxygen like this, like, you know, yeah, I'm all down well, for that. I apparently, like, there's something about talking to your water because your water has feelings and if you talk to it positively, it will hydrate you more. <laughs> I mean – we are like 78% water or whatever it is. I don't, it wouldn't surprise me. Like people forget that trees are real and alive and stuff. And I, I don't talk to them, but I kind of like internally talk to them. If that makes yeah, sense. You know, head. if you pray to God, but it's your inside voice, like, please make me win lotto like that. Yeah. I'd say, yeah, yeah. 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 That to a tree. That. I love I've done it. that to a tree or my house plant. I'm like, hello. Like, you know what mm. I mean? <laughs> Grace and I both live by ourselves. <laughs> yeah, so we got to find anyone we can to talk to. Yeah. Oh. Um, okay. okay, good old Gwyneth. We'll get her on the show. I'll reach out to her people. <laughs> um, have you got anything else? No. What, did you say? No, that's it? That's all I wanted okay. to talk about. So I've got two things for you, mini one and then a big one, as you can see. Psychic reading. So you probably yeah. know where I'm going to go in with this conversation. But oh, God, yeah. um the first one I wanted to speak to you and the listeners because you'll be able to relate to this. Isn't it funny? Okay, Grace doesn't have a car. Grace doesn't have a license. Not that I'm shaming her. She has her L's. Do you have your L's? Yeah. Yes. She has her L's. She doesn't have a license. I've got my license, but I don't have a I don't have a car. So we don't we both don't drive. I mean, you, we live in the city in Sydney. We use public transport a lot. And we both love it. From Uber to the train to the trams, buses, whatever. <laughs> Excuse me. So anyway, have you noticed when you've got a job, so maybe the job you've got now, yes. you catch the same bus, the same train at the same time. And when you yes. do it for like a year, you sit in the same spot in the train, you sit in the same seat in the bus, and it happens to be the same people that are on that bus going to work as well. If it's getting up at six o'clock in the morning, five in the morning. So after a year or six months, you kind of know these other people on your bus or train, but you mm -hmm. don't know them. Yes. And it's really, and for some reason, you would never just sit in as a seat in front of me. You wouldn't change it up. It just feels weird to do that. You kind of go in the same seat mm. if it's there. Have you ever seen someone from your public transport outside of that environment in normal clothes, not their work clothes, going to work outside those hours? It's really weird because you go in to say hello when they're walking past, but forget that you actually don't know them. Have you done that before? So say it was you and you're always on my train and then I was going out for tequila one night and then you walk past and you're at the, the lights and I saw you. I'm like, hey. But then I realized, oh my, she's just on my bus. I don't actually know her. Yes. How funny is that? Have you ever yes. seen someone? It happened to me the other night. What happened? <laughs> I was leaving the gym and I was walking down the escalators and it was nighttime and I saw this woman who I always used to see on the bus. This was a year ago in a different job I had. Yeah. I would always see her on the bus and I just smile and we never spoke and never anything like that. And I saw her walking around and I was like, Oh my God, it's you. But I didn't say that. Obviously that's embarrassing. Yes. But then I thought, I wonder if she recognizes me. Yes. You know? Well, she would, if you're going on the same bus. So what I wanted to say that everyone can definitely relate to this. Everyone's done this and it's funny. Yeah. It's just not spoken about. Do you, if they are on the other side of the road or you exchanging on footpaths or something, if they do walk past and they give you eye contact, do you think you should do the silent where you go, oh, hey, and then you keep on walking or don't even say anything at all? I probably I wouldn't. Think, oh, you wouldn't? I would, I would I smile Yeah. At people, so I would probably just smile. If I get eye contact, I would acknowledge because they've realized that, well, wait, oh, hey, like that. And then you walk up yeah, and you're yeah, walking yeah. like, who was that? I know that person for 15 minutes. You just, you're going through every group <laughs> of friends you've got in your head. And then you realize, oh my God, that's the person from my bus at Monday. Like, you know what I mean? Like, how embarrassing. They think I was saying hello. Like, I'm going to have to be late for work and switch buses. Like, <laughs> it's so true. It's so true. 
Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's just like a funny thing. I think we should just be more friendly and say hello. It doesn't hurt. You know, it's a trust no, thing. Oh, I know. Like it is. Yeah. It is a trust thing. That's a uh, that's a new resolution for me. I need to be more friendly. Okay. She's not a bitch. Don't worry. No, I am friendly. But what's the word? More like outgoing friendly. Right. Got you. Got like you. if someone doesn't acknowledge me first, yes. I can acknowledge them first. Mm. True. Like that, true. That, and know, it's good you say. And it's actually good you say that. And and and, and yeah, just saying that because I'm the person that says hello first. Yes. But I only do that based on I'm nervous too, but I'd rather just take one for the team and cut the ice and then just do it and put it out there. And then they're like, oh, hey, like that. Because I know some people, you know, I'm shy. I'm not shy, but I can be shy. There's a difference. Yes. People think because you're an extrovert, you're not shy. Deep down, I'm shy. I just know how to like put it on and just put myself out there. Yeah. 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 So yeah. my big topic. Yes, please. <laughs> which you're probably aware of with what I've got back in the background. Psychic greetings with Sunny Joe. Um, recently Grace and I had a clairvoyant astrologist on the show three weeks ago called Carol Starr, who's from America. Great guest. She's going to come back on the show this year, do another reading and Grace and I, so check it out. It's called Carol Starr. Um, and she kind of did a reading on us, on our star signs, what's to come and how she got into that work, how she got her abilities. And it was really good to get those questions Mm, answered. Definitely. Um, especially Grace because she's so into it. Mm. anyway i said to her that my mom's a clairvoyant she doesn't do it for money she does it in her private space i've seen my mom do it for like family friends and stuff and it's always been true but i was always quite young but yeah now i'm older to like process remembering that happening and my mom said to me my brother and sister i'm the younger said her abilities one day will go to one of the children i remember her saying that so i said to carol star hey my mom's a clairvoyant she said one of us is going to get the gift and I think it's me. Is that true? And Carol said, yes, it is true. One one of you will get the gift. Now, everyone has the gift. It's just like if you're open enough to use it, kind of mm. like reading the signals and stuff. I think someone that gets the gift just maybe reads it easier. That would be my theory. Or taps and into it. Taps yes. into it, we should say. Yeah, taps into it. So I said to her recently for the last six months, I've been having dreams and then they come true. Now, this dream could be like me dreaming about some the name Siddle, S-I-D-D-L-E. And I'm like, Siddle. And then I was like, didn't didn't think of anything other, like weird dream, other stuff happened. Yeah. And then that week end, I went to my friend's place and my friend got a puppy dog and goes, Sonny, look at my dog. And I'm like, oh my God, you got a puppy. Like, yeah. And I'm like, what did you name it? And they're like, Siddle. And I'm like, whoa, I dreamt about this name a week ago. Why am I dreaming about that of my mate naming it? So just minimal stuff like that. That's the only way I can explain it. And that was happening on a regular basis. And I was Mm. like, okay. And she's like, yes, Carol's like, that's how you're tapping into your abilities. Mm. So she answered that. So since we've done, Grace and I did that interview, Mm. um, (laughs) I had a dream and it was very, very uh, real that same way that it felt like it was going to happen. And it felt like deja vu. So you know when you've dreamt and you yes. know what deja vu feels like. Now, deja vu when you have it is a bit freaky because it feels very familiar. Like mm. you've happened, you've been here before, but you really haven't. But you know you've definitely experienced this before. When I had that dream, it felt like deja vu. And that's why I openly spoke about it. The dream was, and what did I have this dream? Maybe three weeks ago. Three weeks yeah. ago. Today's date is the 7th of January. 2024 so you do the math so it was in December and in the dream a really really bad earthquake happened around the world now it happened all around the world in my dream but not in Australia I live in Australia and the earthquake um, hit on New Year's Day 2024 and went all the way up to the second week of January now when I woke up from this dream I felt that same way like deja vu so Grace, she's one of them. She knows she's one of my good mates. I talked to her about the dream. Grace, I had this dream. What does it mean? I hope it doesn't come true. Told all my friends about it as well. Everyone's like, Sonny, you're, you know, we're drinking over the Christmas holiday. You're crazy. I'm like, I know. I'm not saying like I'm a clairvoyant, but this feels like it's going to happen. And they're like, well, that's soon, New Year's Day. So let's see. Anyway, so I've told a lot of people about it. I hmm. even documented it on TikTok. So I put it on TikTok. I think it was New Year's Eve. I put it on in Australia and we celebrate New Year's Eve before the rest of the world because of the time difference. And I said, I just had a dream. It's very familiar. There's going to be an earthquake on New Year's Day up to the second week of January around the world. And it's going to be really, really bad. Hmm. Put that on TikTok. Anyway, woke up on New Year's Day and then the second, what's the second of January, which would be New hmm. Year's Day for the rest of the world. And I had 
14 messages from friends that I've told the story to. I think Grace is even one of them that messaged me and goes, oh my God, Sonny, turn on the news. Or they screenshotted it to my phone. Yeah. And it showed an earthquake outside of Bali. An earthquake just hit Japan, a really bad one. And now Japan's having a tsunami on New Year's Day. And I'm like, whoa. And everyone's like, how did you know your dreams are coming real? And I was like, this is freaky, blah, 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 blah. Two days later, an earthquake happened in uh, New York. New York don't even get earthquakes. And now it's happening around the world. And there was also one in um, outside Huntington, like Los Angeles Beach as well. Mm-hmm. So it's happening all around the world. So everyone's like, oh, my God, everything's time stamped. And then obviously I put it on TikTok. So people who viewed that TikTok remembered that TikTok and came back to it and said, oh, my God, did you know Japan just had an earthquake on New Year's Day in this country? So everyone's messaging me. I'm like, yes, everyone's sending it to me. So everyone on TikTok's freaking out because mm. I put this up beforehand. I was like, oh, this is actually a little bit scary because it's very specific. Yes. Now, I think it was on New Year's Day, Australia. My friend said to me in a group chat, like a Christmas chat that we have, um, have you had any dreams recently? And I said, yes, I did. The other night I had a dream about a plane crashing and going up into flames and it's going to happen very soon. And then I said, I hope it doesn't though, because crane plane crashes are scary, right? And one hasn't happened in ages. So I said that in the group message, et cetera, and said it will happen very, very soon. That was it. Eight hours later, that same day, which was on uh, the 2nd of January, I think it was, um, everyone sent me a screenshot um, of Japan and a plane crash in Japan killed five people. The other plane uh, evacuated, like evacuated 231 people yes. up into flames. Everyone screenshot it to me. So me predicting it, putting on TikTok, uh, sorry, I put it on, um, I messaged my friends in the group chat and said, it's going to happen very soon. Six hours later, the plane crash happened. So mm. all my friends in that group chat now is freaking out going, dude, how did you predict that? Then I got scared because I'm like, oh my God, my dreams are coming true and exactly very specific of the dates that I'm giving and happening. And that one was just six hours of me telling mm. them. And I was like, even though the dream happened three nights prior to that, it happened from six hours of me telling him, which was very soon, like I said. So then I put that on TikTok. I'm like, this is actually freaky now. And then after that one, I said, no more dreams, no more dreams. I'm not into this anymore. They're all dark dreams. They're not powerball numbers. They're mm. not fun things. They're all death things. And I kind of don't want it to come true because it's all like, crashing and planes and earthquakes yeah. it's like a scary horror film the world's ending right like i'm not into this it's too negative and too negative and then everyone said please please everyone on tiktok was like if you've had one more dream please tell us because everything you're putting up documenting is working so i put my latest one up which i'll tell you guys now as well okay i don't know this you one. do know this one i told you oh, do i oh, yeah okay. so i did i did because i've been very specific as well and i don't want it to come real so in early Je- we're in january 2024 now around the world oh yes Early this year, a very famous American singer with a lot of tattoos and a very famous American female singer, no tattoos, are going to die early this year. And they're very famous. Early this year. When you say early, I say like, you know, like January to March. That's early this year. In the dream also, it um, a president or a prime minister, because I saw two Ps, dies this year as well. And the way that they die is really fucking weird. So in my dream, I remembering it feeling weird and I remember, and then when I woke up, it's like, boom. And then you forgot how they died. And I hate that. Everyone knows dreaming. So in my dream, if anyone's listening to this, this is the only way I can explain it. Everyone has dreams and you're dreaming and you knew, you know who the other person is in your dream and you mm. know them. But when you mm. wake up, you forget who that person is. Yeah. So when I woke up from the dream, I knew the singer with the tattoos that's American and I knew the female singer American as well. I knew they were both American. I knew he had tattoos, but I forgot who it was when I woke up and it really annoyed me. I don't even think I would put that on air and say the name anyway, because that would be scary hearing that if it was your name. So I would never do that. I would never yes. out their names. I don't, I think that's gross. If like, yes. I don't, would never do that. Even if I was for sure, I'm not a psychic by the way, guys, and I'm not a clairvoyant. It's just my dreams recently are coming true. And this is the yes. latest one. So Prime Minister or President's going to die this year. The way that they die is really weird. That's happened in my dream. And early this year, uh, American singer, heaps of tattoos and female singer is going to die. That's the latest dream I've had. That's the latest one I'll put on TikTok. That's the latest one I'm saying now. I'm going to leave it at that. I don't want many more of them. I want, like, happier dreams and stuff. Good ones. Yeah. Yeah. Good ones. So people are saying you look like Jesus. 
Jesus, you're the Messiah. You've come back to save oh us on TikTok. God. I'm not even joking. The one, where my dreams come true. And this guy's like, I don't believe in that stuff, but I saw your TikTok come up on my feed and I saved it. And then it happened. And he goes, I went back to check just in case. And when that plane crash happened, I'm like, how the hell did he guess that? I knew that before it would happen. And I'm like, yeah, anyway. Okay. I'm just going to have a quick look at these TikToks because I want to see – um, Can you play the one that the earthquake one that come true and played in the microphone for the people to listen to? That was the first one that come true that um, uh, but shocked everyone with the, yes. how I guess the earthquake and I documented it on TikTok. Yes, and it yes, on New I, Year's will. Day. I will. I will. Okay. They can hear it. Um, all right. <laughs> So I told my mates two weeks ago that I had this very, very vivid dream and it was like half dream, half deja vu. So it felt like I've experienced before. It felt a bit different to a dream. Anyway, it was that there was a really, really bad earthquake that happens on New Year's Day up to the second week of January in between that time. And my mates are like, you're crazy. I'm like, I know it's just a dream. It just felt different and it felt like it was going to happen. It was a different type of feeling. Anyway... My mates messaged me today, it's New Year's Eve in Australia, and a 5.6 magnitude earthquake uh, just hit an island outside of Indonesia. And they're like, dude, I think a prediction is happening. So, uh, yeah, it's scary. I hope it doesn't happen because I don't want people to get injured, but I'm just documenting just in case it does uh, come true. Uh, but uh, happy New Year. And then it- <laughs> happy New Year. <laughs> well, but it was a dream. I didn't know that it was actually going to happen. And then the, on the news day, the next day around the world, it happened from Japan. So everyone was freaking out from that TikTok. Why? Is it like, I'm I've just given it, <laughs> like, given this prediction, like, your country's going to go into flames, but happy new year. Like, yeah. Yeah. Oh, there was a 5.6 magnitude earthquake in Jakarta, but happy new year. Yeah, but it was like New Year's Eve when I recorded that in Australia. So Yeah, but one had already happened. What one? When you recorded that. The one outside Bali. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but that's when I I still predicted it before that because I had the dream. No, two weeks no, ago. I was telling to, people I on know. Christmas Eve. No, what I was saying was that's yeah. why it's funny you saying Happy New Year. Oh right, because one already started, and I yeah. said New Year's Day, and it wasn't Woo. New Year's Day yet. No, well I didn't even mean it like that at all. It's actually. Oh, no, I know. It's just funny. Because now when I no, have dreams, you, you've been a bit like what is Paltrow saying that actually. Oh right. <laughs> So, yeah, uh, what do you think, listeners? Are you into psychics? Are you into astrology? Do you believe in it? Um, I definitely do. Mm. I ain't claiming that I am. I've never claimed that I am, and I don't want to claim that I am. Like, I'm not. I'm just – it's happening, so I'm just vocally telling people, telling TikTok, telling our listeners because it's happening and all of it's coming true, and I just find it – I don't know. I'm into sci-fi. I'm into aliens. I'm into the other side and stuff. So for me, I'm like, well, this is tripping me out that it's actually tr- happening. That's yeah. the side of it where I'm like, whoa, this is a trip out, man. Yeah, like, definitely. Because it's very specific. I've been very specific with dates. Yes. Well, yes. we'll see. Yes. Coming soon, sadly. Yes. The death. The deaths. I've given three deaths for this year. How bad is that? Oh, I, don't I know. To... You need to cut the energy ties to this or whatever. It's too It's too much. Hey, what if I'm that guy? Am I the Gre- Reaper? The Grim Reaper. Uh, I like his I like his clothes that he wears. No, like, but like, can I, I say <laughs> I saw the funniest video the other day of, you know, the Australian politician Bob Catter? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Here again, my other thing about you, we talked about this yesterday. You have the hots for politicians. No, I don't. Don't. I think they're so funny. Bob yeah. Catter said something that was like, he tweeted something and it was like, tomorrow feels a bit like death or something like that. And then he showed up to Parliament in a Grim Reaper costume and he was like, today is the day the government killed the Australian automobile industry. <laughs> <laughs> this is Australian politics, by the way, it's like so at our White good. House. It's yeah. so good. Anyway, it makes me love Australia. Reminds- We're like, Australians good. are so professional, but unprofessional. Yeah. Unprofessional with things like that, like how they, we had a politician called Pauline Hanson and they chucked her in jail and said, you know, you're guilty for fraud or whatever it was. And then after a year of her doing jails, they actually realized she was innocent. <laughs> so they took her out of jail and said, sorry, you're actually innocent. And then they put her on Dancing with the Stars and she was a terrible dancer. <laughs> she was and so then, And then she created her own party and got elected and now she's back. She's back. 
Yeah. Anyway. It was so iconic back in the day. She had a song called Pauline Pants Down. Do you remember that? By the way, that song's so you. Yes. Yes, I do remember that. So funny. Yeah, definitely. Very me. But anyway. anyway. Um, So to finish off the show, what is your big reveal song? I have mine as the opening act. Reveal song of our hot Love Island bodies after we work out for 2024. You start first because I haven't had time to think. And I think you've been thinking the whole time I've been talking and not listening to me. I was listening to you. <laughs> I had nothing to say. I couldn't. <laughs> what, what is there more to say? Really? Um, mine is. So I want to pump up the audience, obviously, for the main event. So mine is. I'm Every Woman by Shaka Khan. Oh, not Winnie Houston. No. I'm Every Woman. It's all I need. That song? Yep. Oh, and that's revealing, like, you in a bikini, showing your body, you've been working out at Virgin Gym, yeah? Yeah. Well, you wouldn't wear a bikini? I'm not doing that for you, though. Oh, uh, okay. No. Um, yeah. I'm wearing it's all about you, Sunny. And my song... With me showing my muscly body will be um I'm too sexy for this shirt. Just I'm a model, you know what I mean. I I shake my little tush on um, the catwalk. Well what else is there? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. It's kinda hard. Okay. No? Okay. No worries. Yeah. Thought you, you wanna take like, Taylor Swift know. song? No, like Justin Timberlake or like Hey, he's cancelled. He's something gross. more like Janet. I know, you can't have Janet for my reveal body. I'm a male. Oh, it doesn't matter. Yeah. I'm excited for this party. Yeah, I mean, I have to get the body first. I did eat pods last night. Oh, I felt sick too. The whole packet I ate. It's easy to do, isn't it? Yep, very. Are you you Mars or Snickers or Bounty? Mars, Mars. For pods? Yeah, Yeah. cool. Are you? All right. Uh, yeah, I'm always Mars. Well. I think they're the best tasting. But then if I get them, I will sometimes switch the flavour just to just just to double check. Just maybe I do like it. Do you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Welcome back. We love doing this for you. Please follow us. Watch us on YouTube. Give us a like on Apple Podcasts. Give us a review. Give us a five star. Give us a like on Spotify. You know, people say that at the end of their episodes because. That's that's how we get funded, okay? So yeah, exactly. It. So please. It puts us up in the chart. So. Help us out. Yeah, help a brother out. We'll do something mm. nice for you. We'll get you on the show. Yeah, we'll interview you. <laughs> yeah, about your process of giving us a review. <laughs> All right, guys. Peace oh, out. We'll guys. see you next Tuesday. Bye. Bye. Bye.